Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the Paracast. We're at Beer Geek once again, John. So, how's your tasty Orion beer? Is it uh, I usually you talk for at least a couple of minutes before you say hello. I know, but uh, I'm catching yeah. you off guard. Yeah, you so, are. Uh, my so I'm popping it up to you. My beer's good. Yeah? I'm drinking a nice Irish... I forget what it's called. Irish... Uh, IP. <laughs> you don't know what the fuck you're drinking. <laughs> IPL. <laughs> Sorry. What's it called again, Mr. Mark? It's uh, the Fox's Rock Indian Pale Lager. The, yeah. the Fox's Rock Indian Pale Lager. Thank you. Get it fucking right, man. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If if you're listening to this, Fox's Rock people, many apologies. So it I is delicious. The, the Irish part is like where where your beer is from. Yeah, it's it's Northern Irish, if I remember correctly. I I was listening. I was listening. So I was listening. So. Um, but yeah, anyways, uh, if you heard anything in the background, that was uh, Mr. Swifty, so spewing his normal Irregular. shit, so you know he's full of hot air, so, oh man, oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> but uh, anyways, uh, we wanted to talk to you guys today, uh, we've, got, we've got a few things we're going to talk about, and then we're just going to kind of let the conversation go where it might go, which is what John and I usually get up to. So, uh, sorry for the introduction that was just a bit, you know, random cunt stuff, but that's just, that's just the nature of the game whenever you're listening to the Paracast, you know? That's all about. Absolutely. So, if you're going to have a conversation, it's, it's not always roses. Yeah, so. if you're going to, like, surprise someone after, like, ten seconds of talking, yep. and then not know what beer you're drinking, mm. you, that's what's going to happen, Chad. Sorry, guys, it was a bit amateur <laughs> hour, really. It really was. I so. liked it. But uh, anyways, guys, I want to talk to you guys a bit about Jeff Sessions. That's what we're going to talk about first. Amateur hour. Yeah, if there was an amateur hour. Um, so before I, I continue on with like what, if you've been following the news at all, you, you, you're probably aware of what's going on. But I'll give you a little bit of a background of who Jeff Sessions is. He is the uh, Alabama senator um, who's, who's kind of, I guess, kind of uh, just... A cloud kind of follows the guy, really. Like uh, he's definitely a bit of a, a damn senator in the sense of he said some pretty off the cuff, offhand kind of not such nice things about certain uh, minority groups. Like he's he's definitely uh, he's definitely come across as a racist senator essentially in the past, and now from he, Alabama, did you say? Yeah, that's correct. From Alabama. Which, if you're from the South and you're listening to this, you, you can you kind of get it. Alabama is probably one of, I mean, that's where the Civil Rights Movement kind of started yeah. and ended. Because Alabama, if you ever go and visit that state, it's, it's still got some, some pretty like dark alleys, so to speak, to its yeah. history. Where people are, are still kind of, uh, it's still segregated in yeah. a sense. So continue on, like... So, uh, anyways, um, Jeff Sessions, he's a senator, but uh, right now he is currently working with uh, the president. He is. The Sorry, attorney. how does that work? Is he was so is he he was a senator. He is still a current acting senator, and I believe he does he have to give that job up. Um, I believe that's true. I have to look that up, actually. Yeah, sorry. I'm not totally I'll, sure. I'll but, find that out myself, sorry. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. He did have to give that up. He did yeah. have to give up Seems the seat. Like but to, uh, right? he's currently Donald Trump's uh, attorney general. Yeah. So So if you move into the executive, you have to give up the senator thing. That's which correct. I guess is like Hillary Clinton, right? Yeah. She kind of did the same thing. Yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. Exactly. Because uh, she was... Where, where was she actually? New York senator. Yeah, yeah, that's right. New York senator. Because uh, Bill was in Arkansas. So he, he was he a was governor, a governor of Arkansas. Yeah, yeah. So, which is weird because, actually, I'm I'm assuming Hillary is from the Northeast, but if you listen to Bill, he's definitely from Arkansas. <laughs> yeah. So, he's definitely a Southern boy. So, but uh, anyways, that's that's kind of Jeff Sessions' background. He's now the sitting Attorney General. Um, kind of had a, a dark. Uh, passed as a senator with yeah. saying some pretty 
some pretty off the cuff, off handed things. Alabama things. Yeah, Alabama things. But uh, anyways, currently what what's going on with Jeff Sessions is he essentially said under oath. Yeah, I don't know if it was technically under oath, but uh, basically said that he had no meetings with Russia to talk about anything, and it was revealed in the media that pretty, I'm pretty sure right before the inauguration or right after the inauguration, I have to look at, look so at the, the basi- article. Basically he said, I did not have convivial I've, relations with that country. Exactly, I did not have relations with that country. But then it kind of came out that he had been doing some cigaring in the yeah, he, sitting room. He actually met with uh, the, the prime not prime minister, but um, ambassador, the ambassador sure. to the United States from Russia. So, and uh, as a the, senator, as as a senator, so which, unfortunately, at least in my opinion, like there's no way for us to know what was actually discussed in that room, apart so, from what the Russian wiretapping. Other than that, there's no way to know. Yeah, exactly. So, and probably the American wiretapping too. Certainly, but you know, for the for the layman. Yeah, absolutely. For, officially, for layman. officially, officially, right? We don't know the words that were actually uttered in there, but um, like, I th- it, it definitely is shady. Considering he tried to deny that he had ever met with Russia, then it comes out that oh, you very much did meet with with a Russian diplomat, like twice or something, right? Yeah, exactly, or twice. Multiple times. Yeah. And you won't disclose the nature of what those meetings were. And there's this whole scandal going on right now with uh, the election tampering from the Russians. Like, it's just kind of shady, very, very shady. So, so, like the thing though is the big, the big problem though, right? Is that you're not allowed to talk about state business before you're sworn in. Is that right? Correct. So, Correct. it's a little bit of a technicality if you want to be detached from it and not be. Republican pro or Democrat pro mm. at the end of the day it's like hey I'm part of the transition team right that is going to become you know this thing this person right right so we are basically essentially we're squabbling around the idea that like hey Trump won the election in November mm-hmm. and officially you're not allowed to talk as being part of the administration until January mm. so sure. there's like a two and a half month window maybe Right. Where if you ever did do that, technically you would be treasonous or yes, you know, treasonous. liable for something. Exactly. So um, I think I think there's something though that like I guess something that's a bit nagging is it, it, we may not be aware of it, but I am I'm almost positive that like what Senator Sessions or I'm sorry Attorney General Sessions did is probably something that everyone knows you know what I mean like for him to do it and then get caught that was the problem he got caught but I I'm I'm pretty confident that if you were probably a leftist or I'm sorry if you were probably a Democrat the Attorney General of Obama was doing the exact same things so it was just hush hush you know what I mean like yeah it was going on but it just isn't it didn't get caught by the media to me so to me, the idea, like, I guess, like, how you have such a formal process of when you have your election and then when the new administration takes place, mm. in terms of you have such a formality about that, you know, you have a set date for an election, you have a set date for inauguration, etc. Right. It leaves that, like, kind of two-month gap, two, two-and-a-half-month gap. From so six to be made, right? It's just, that's what it is. Yeah. But, like, it... it kind of requires a transition team just by its very nature it right. requires the fact that there's a transition uh, administration that's in power mm-hmm. that's essentially a lame duck and is waiting to pass the reins over mm-hmm. and then obviously it requires a transition team to be made so that you actually hit the ground running with mm-hmm. power as well like Certainly. just the very nature of having an election at this year mm-hmm. at the end of it and then actual inauguration in a different year at the start of it right. means that there's a two to three month gap just just by the way that you you do your politics right. every four years right. so, or eight years. Right. That something like that is not really a big deal. Well, there's also been, to kind of 
to add on to this conversation about what happened. But if you're a transition team, why is it a big deal that you might be talking about your future job? Because right. you are in the transition team, transitioning to being the thing, right? Right, to like, being the thing. So kinda makes a lot it's of kind of sense. natural that you're going to be discussing yeah. things like this, like creating ties to people that like, you're going to probably have to talk. However, like, to kind of defend uh, Senator Sessions in this sense, like, he's the Attorney General, which is essentially, like, uh, he's responsible for... Um, internal law? Internal law, exactly. And if there's kind of an open inquiry about voter fraud that was Russian involved in the U.S. election, don't you think Jeff Sessions, who is not quite the attorney general wants to get on the right foot and get ahead of something like that's probably what was going on he's trying to he's trying to get down to the facts probably mm-hmm. you or at least you would hope yeah so but there's also been some calls on the republican side saying if senator sessions isn't doing that and he's essentially trying to cover up what's happening with trump he needs to resign immediately like it, the problem is this the facts just aren't clear on it yet. Nobody appears to know what actually happened. In exactly. The That's that. That seems to be what the problem is. Yeah. So, I think uh, one thing that would probably clarify maybe the Russian involvement, or somewhat. I, I've heard this uh, on the Dave Rubin report. Um, I'll have to go back and look in just a second about which episode it was, but. Um, Anyways, it it was a particular gentleman on uh, Dave Rubin's podcast that was talking, excuse me, that was talking about how um, he believes that the reason Trump isn't disclosing his uh, his tax information is because he actually has quite a bit of Russian ties in in uh, like his money is essentially owned by Russian people oligarchs. So, and he's basically the reason why Trump won't release him is because he doesn't want people to see his connection to Russia and how probably there might be some Russian influence in the election based off of his being elected. Uh, wow. Yeah, but I've, I, think I've, I think I've also listened to something else uh, from someone else who says that it's actually like not, it's an open secret. It's like, I mean, it might be within reason a secret but it's actually it's pretty much common knowledge if you look for it right that um no no banks of any real repute will actually lend to trump right because it after the 2000 banks. after 2008 recession you know financial you know pretty tight but quite, quite tight with finances and property speculation etc kind of trump's kind of like you know like money as such bread and butter mm. that's just not good investments for the financial firms that were trying to crack down on that kind of stuff mm. so he had to go to like foreign um you know lenders as such because mm. he wasn't going to get any credit from america sure it's not really like uh if you look at it it's not really like trump being a bad guy for doing that or a good guy for doing that or whatever it's just the reality of 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 where the world was post financial crisis was that american banks just wouldn't lend to his type of business right so it's actually kind of common knowledge if you kind of brush away like a layer of topsoil Mm. like that he is indebted to uh, chinese banks to russian banks etc it's not actually a secret Right. Like, you know, like it's not like a, oh my God, like we've found a gold nugget here. Right. It's like, no, the guy is he been lending. Research. He's been, uh, uh, you know, he's been lending, or like a creditor, sorry, mm. for uh, the best part of eight years. Right. So the guy I was talking about was, uh, he writes for The Atlantic. What's um, his name? Oh, man. I'm trying to find his name. Is there a guy called Frum? Like if yes. are you is in Frum? Yeah, okay, Frum. yeah. I think it's David Frum. David Frum. Yeah, yeah. Like, I've, I've heard this guy David talk Frum. as well. Like I didn't hear him with uh, who did you say? With Dave. It Rubin. was with Dave Rubin. Yeah, I didn't hear him with Dave Rubin, but I've heard him talk about this too. And he essentially says that you know, with minimal digging, effectively, it's it's an open secret that Trump has as a creditor or uh, a lender or whatever to, you know, Russians and Chinese. What he was saying, if you go to any Trump, uh, like Trump um, residencies or something like that, a large majority of them are Chinese and Russian owned just because probably the nature of his 
um, his business dealings, right? Yeah, and who his lenders so. are, or who his creditors are. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, which it, it, it's probably also the the state of business today too. Like, obviously, it's an international pain. So, I think one of the really really interesting things about having a Trump presidency mm-hmm. is this fact of like how much more money flows in the world than say labor or people if you know what I mean Mm -hmm. like um, there really isn't any tie to money if you know what I mean like there's very few there's not a lot of controls with money Mm -hmm. there is some but it's it flows pretty damn freely if you know what I mean nothing like labor or nothing like humans or people and such it's far more liquid than that yeah and the thing is like when this election was sort of all about kind of like oh, get rid of the career politicians like fuck the career politicians because you know like they've been uh, mayors or they've been local body politicians or they've been state politicians or they've been you know uh, representatives like house of representatives or senators that made a whole career out of being a politician mm. fuck that like what did you ever actually do with your life blah 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 mm-hmm. let's get a guy like Trump in let's get a businessman in and it seemed like that would be like this really kind of interesting fresh start kind of thing mm-hmm. but it's actually opened up all these whole new problems yeah like, exactly you know like if you have a guy like Obama who yeah probably doesn't really have any business acumen mm. And has pretty much been tied to writing a few books and working as a lawyer and as a lecturer, or like you know, at a university. Right. You kind of know where his money came from. It's right. fairly publicly funded. Wrote a few books, got some book sales. Yeah, All right. He's, he's he doesn't he's not owned by anybody. Right. You know exactly. You, you know, you go back to George W. Bush. He's kind of you know part of a it's kind of in the middle Texas right. kind of. Oil, yeah, like man. oil man or whatever yeah. but again it's kind of like well you know that's a natural resource that's in the ground locally and he's mm-hmm. kind of just you know made multiple business or like his family has kind of made multiple business out of that etc right. you know Bill Clinton again career politician yeah, right. yeah. And it's like there's no real like foreign interest foreign buy off of any of these guys exactly you can hate them for being career politicians or like kind of oligarchic families and shit but you can't be like, oh, well, fucking Bill Clinton's owned by the Russians or, like, George Bush is owned by the Chinese or right. whatever. It's like, you can make maybe tentative connections to that. Mm-hmm. But, like, you really can't say that about mm, pretty much every kind of president that's kind of come through. Right. Whereas now Absolutely right. you've got Trump and it's like, he's not a career politician. He's a businessman. Mm-hmm. And he's an international businessman who's actually like owned by the balls by many lenders, right? Who are multinational, right? So all of a sudden, it's like there are countries that have ownership of your president, right? Or ownership of your president's interests, business interests. Certainly. What? What? I don't think anyone thought about that. Too no. Much. Well, and to be fair, like Trump is essentially the first of his kind. Like we've, like the United States has never had a businessman president. So the closest thing that we've that hasn't been like a career politician maybe Andrew Jackson he was a military general I, I guess so is so is George Washington um, I think let's see you could probably say Eisenhower yeah Eisenhower like, was I don't, I Eisenhower don't, wasn't I don't know your politics too much before 1900 even before not World War Two, really mm-hmm. but you would say that probably Eisenhower would be a guy that really wasn't a career politician because he was a career general, if mm. you know what I mean. And I, who knows what's better or worse about that. But at the end of the day, there's that whole kind of joke about Eisenhower actually taking a demotion to become the U.S. president because he actually was like essentially like the commander of like the whole like Western forces allies like mm. the whole he was pretty much running the whole of Western Europe against the Soviets right in the right. 50s and he actually took a demotion to you know be the US president if you know what I mean right that's the joke if you know what I yeah, mean yeah exactly so like it's like he would be probably maybe your last really like non career mm. politician but you know mm. being a high level general that's fairly political yeah. in its own way because like, I was trying to think of who maybe would be equivalent to that. Def- Teddy Roosevelt was an interesting guy, but he was a governor before he became president. So, but Teddy Roosevelt was, he was a pretty, really a strange kind of president. I mean, he was, he was definitely a, like a, a fairly progressive um, president, 
but he was like an author and wanted to be an explorer and a soldier and like an, yeah. just a naturalist really I think so. also like when you have a look at someone like uh, Theodore Roosevelt like it's you're talking about over a hundred years ago yeah exactly and so the, the history like history or time is not kind to people or like attitudes essentially mm-hmm. so if you're trying to like judge the morals or the ethics of say Theodore Teddy Roosevelt and you're looking back in time like 100, 110 years or whatever mm-hmm. you're basically dealing with an alien or like a foreign person right. if you know what I mean in right. terms of like what is acceptable and normal to them it would be so much so different than us it's very easy to paint that person as like bigoted or racist right. or chauvinist or right. whatever and there might be elements and reasonable elements to all of those things mm-hmm. but like when you give it the modern day lens and you look back that far or mm-hmm. further mm-hmm. it just becomes a shit show if you know what I mean exactly. like you can't really say that he was progressive or right. regressive or anything right. it's like he was just a dude of that time and it's a time that we no longer have right. for good or bad right and it's like he might have been progressive in the time but now like you can't doesn't pair him up to now doesn't pair it with our times so no yeah, certainly not that's what I don't when, and that's I, I guess think. Yeah, no, and like you're one hundred percent correct because like there's no way that you can actually try and put them in the lens because you could say that someone like Theodore Roosevelt was racist, but that was also the state of the time that he lived in. Exactly. Because or not necessarily racist, but you know, like anti Semitic or whatever. Or, or to you know? put the other way and say that he was progressive. Exactly. It doesn't matter, like either way, you're just dealing about an alien. You're like trying to attach it and say that he was a good guy or a bad guy, but mm-hmm. you're talking about a good guy, bad guy, alien, basically. Mm-hmm. 110, 120 years ago, it's just a completely different place. Right. Completely different world. There, it, it's not really, we're not really, it's not useful. Here. It's not useful. Like, I'm sure people 120 years from now are going to be looking at the ethics of today what? and thinking, what the fuck were they thinking? Totally right. It's like, completely. just ridiculous. Like, you're, not, you're not going to be looking at. Yeah, you're not going to, well, I mean, like, yeah, you could maybe you know, make the case for or against someone maybe like Obama, who might stand a, a longer test of time than, mm-hmm. say, somebody like Trump or mm-hmm. maybe George Bush, right. W, whatever. But, I mean, at the end of the day, they're all going to fall down. Right. They're all have going to have been pro or, or negative for things that will just seem like right. common sense in the right. future. And that's, I mean, just say, for example, like factory farming or, or like drums. just say... Drums, yeah, it could definitely. That's a definite weak point. Weak, weak point for for yeah. Obama, mm-hmm. but like say, just like uh, just meat, meat production, the way that we eat meat, mm-hmm. the whole idea of just industrial farming, mm-hmm. like that might be looked back on as something akin to slavery. Who knows? I'm just right. chucking it out there. Right. In a hundred years from now, when maybe you can grow meat in the lab and you don't need to own like right. tens or hundreds or millions, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of animals or whatever. Right. But, that kind of that kind of production, that kind of acceptance of that kind of thing, mm-hmm. might be looked back on as like being abhorrent, like absolutely mm-hmm. abhorrent, and we're all part of that. Mm. So if you're ever in the history books, or I'm ever in the history books, or someone like Obama or uh, whoever is in right. the history books, they're going to be they're not vegans, right. you know, they're not they're not in the progressive side of that, right? But they're just people of their time, and it was a normal thing to be, it was a normal thing to do. Mm-hmm. So where do you fall on, this is to kind of shift the gears here, but it's going along with what you're saying, um, where do you fall on factory farming? Like, how do you feel about that? Oh wow, this is like a, a pre-shout out, but we, we weren't going to discuss this at all. No, we no. weren't. Um, throwing your curveball again. Yeah, double curve. What's yeah. a double curve ball? We don't have to go too deep into this, but we If you throw me a double curve ball, does it come back to you? Ooh, yeah, it would be, huge it depends if it's only like a like maybe a, go to first a one base. quarter. If it's a quarter of a curveball, it goes into the dirt. Oh, it goes down. Oh, yeah, okay. full one. Yeah. Oh, so you're almost like playing cricket now. It's yeah, that's right. Okay. That's right. All right. Um, wow, that was interesting. Yeah, that was a, a, the second curveball for sure. Yeah. Missed it. Struck out. Nah. Um, where do I fall with factory farming? Well, shout out to Tomas Tomasi Creek. Tomasi. We definitely want to get you on at some stage. Yeah. Have a, a bit of a because he's he's our resident vegan. Yeah, might and be, might Taiwan be only, celebrity might be the only one that we know. And Taiwan <laughs> celebrity. No, we know no, a few more vegans. Than I that, know one more vegan. He's, you're, you're our favorite vegan, Tom. Yeah. We're gonna hopefully have you on at some stage, and we can talk some yeah animal factory farming shop or just agricultural shop. <laughs> but uh, yeah, how do I feel about factory farming? Hmm. 
Um, that's a really interesting question. Or like, that's a big, it's a, it's big, a deep, it's a it's, big question. It's a big yeah. question. Yeah. Big question to be hit, but like to be blindsided with there. Yeah. Mm. Um, not your fault. I'm not holding against you. But I'm just. Um, all right. You, just give me an off the cuff answer. Like I, you don't yeah, have to go into great detail. Yeah, I guess just the thing is like I want to be quite specific here. I want to be quite careful because I do actually really want to push this issue somewhere along the line right this year. So I don't want to like say anything too silly, but um, I guess I am I am basically against factory farming. Yeah, but I am for farming. I know exactly what you mean. Like, so you want to still eat meat, correct? There's an intensity of farming that is not level, like it depends on what it is that you're farming, mm. but there is an intensity of farming where it becomes silly, or it, becomes, or it becomes more than silly, because silly actually sounds too light, it becomes abhorrent, it becomes mm-hmm. just diabolical, Yeah, absolutely. and that gets hit, say, with... Uh, I would say like sort of like chick farming, or chicken farming, mm-hmm. uh, that sort of side of things. Probably lump uh, like uh, certain like so poultry. Let's say poultry mm-hmm. essentially, and uh, pig farming. I would say we also hit that mm-hmm. pretty consistently. Certainly. Whereas I think there are other meats like say beef mm-hmm. and lamb, where you would actually find that a lot of the beef and lamb is actually raised in like fairly decent or acceptable feedlots slash grass fed mm. like there's actually a very big spectrum there yeah whereas like if you where where you're getting your chicken from where you're getting your turkey from where you're getting your eggs from mm-hmm. that kind of area like your ducks whatever goose all that shit the fowl or whatever mm-hmm. That is kind of farmed excessively and badly. I think. Right. I believe that. Like it's it's not it's not concerning like the well being of the animal. It's more or less concerning about how quickly can we get this from from conception no to fuck. table. Yeah. There's no give a fuck about the animal. Yeah. Exactly. That. And and then, and then I would say that like with with pigs, mm-hmm. it's maybe a slight 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 drop down the down the scale, but it's it's pretty much there as well. It's like it's past it. Like. Most of the pigs you're gonna find have like got a pretty rough deal mm. and like are not being in any kind of decent kind of feedlot or any kind of system that's ethical essentially. Right, right. But then once you slip out of that, if you start going to meats like beef, mm. that's contentious. But like if you go to you know sheep like lamb, mm. you know you go to goats, you go to venison, deer, you go to these things. The the meat selection or like the way that these animals are like farmed slash killed slash herded whatever mm-hmm. becomes very ethical I think right. so well, New and Zealand beef's pretty un- much factory farm it's free range like grass for the most part right so New Zealand beef is yeah yeah I'm sure. sure there probably is the odd in that might be a little bit factory no pretty much no factory farming mm. I, I mean I'd be happy to be good to, for somebody to prove me wrong on that but like uh, I think probably the only kind of intensity farming that we have mm-hmm. is at the lower level like when you're talking about eggs you know mm-hmm. like battery hens etc with the egg farming right um, again like people have just farmers have just exploited that niche of like well this is a fairly small animal that no one gives a fuck about and like we can kind of exploit it it's a bird mm. so you know it's not really part of the mammalian setup like we have less feeling for it it's gonna know? make eggs no matter what yeah we're gonna pump so, this shit out we're just gonna like crank the production up right like, that happens everywhere i think right but like so i'm against the factory farming stuff but i am pro farming and i think that's an important distinction there's a sliding scale of ethics and Sorry. farming and so not everything is right or not everything is wrong right. but I think when you approach it say from the vegan angle essentially just all farming all meat is bad right mm. it's all kind of lumped in the same boat and I have right. a big problem with that right. because that's just not really thinking about the reality of, of, of the different animals of and what the different humane ways. farming can do yeah like the, there is a huge humane factor to a lot of farming and it's, mm-hmm. it's not really expressed or shown I don't think Certainly. or like in a vegan community Certainly. and they're being a bit close minded about that well like I this is it's a bit different viewpoint of what you're coming from because you're talking about 
free range grass fed edibles that are on a farm and I'm, I'm going to kind of shift gears with you it, it can't apply to everyone because obviously you and I live in a city in Taiwan and people just don't have access to land like people in Texas or New Zealand or sorry, Tejas, sorry, Tejas like Canada Tejas. like the kind of access to land that, that people in those areas have um, but quite a few people in Texas have enough land where they will raise animals on the land and essentially farm those animals themselves. So, and I'm 100% for that practice. Like being able to provide your your own source of uh, nourishment and harvesting animals that you have raised. Like if you talk to anyone that owns a small farm, like you raise that cow from birth to essentially harvest and you're, you're a bit gutted about having to take that animal's life. But you realize if you don't kill that animal, you won't be able to eat. And you won't be able to sustain your life. So yeah. you take that animal's life so that you can go on. So I feel, I feel like with that kind of stuff, it gets pretty like nitty-gritty and small. Like, mm. like I don't know. Like, I mean, I don't want to go with that. Like, I don't really agree with, like... I'm not a, I'm not for or against it like mm-hmm. the, the family farming or the individual farming or like you know like only supplying if, yourself if only a few people can do it you yeah know what I mean like it, I think it, it's not definite. sustaining yeah it's a finite thing like you know at the end of the day like we're becoming more and more urban and like you know most people are very detached from like where their food comes from of course and there's nothing wrong with that but that's just the reality right so we're particularly right about that either but I mean that's just the reality right but I'll throw another one back there Oh, I'll throw another one back. So, if we're if we're up in arms about like farming, if we're looking at it as farming being animals, right? Mm-hmm. Then what about if we throw it to horticulture? Mm-hmm. So if we're talking about farming that's non-animals, so you know we're talking about fruit or vegetables essentially. Right. So if we look at horticulture, ethically as a vegan, like how do you like? I mean, you're not. I'm not. We're not vegans, but I mean, I'm just saying this as a thought experiment. Mm-hmm. Ethically, as a vegan, why is it why is it acceptable to essentially factory farm vegetables and a factory farm fruit? Like none of that stuff is being none of that stuff is being harvested in natural states. No. But you'll happily go and eat that from a farmers market, or you'll happily go and eat that from a supermarket, or whatever, mm-hmm. in replace of you know your basic requirements for like protein slash meat right you know and feel very like privileged and happy about that right so like where did like where does the feeling line cut off mm, exactly the the area is too gray so and i think if you asked a vegan person we'll have to get some vegan folks on to help us answer this question but that's my I don't opening, that's my opening slava yeah. to um to tom I guess. absolutely so you heard it here first tom that's coming for you. So I don't want it to be an angry thing. No, but I, I do want to have conversations. Yeah. I don't think that you, you or I, are angry at vegans, and vegans shouldn't be angry at you or I. You know what I mean? It just seems a little so, bit too, like there's a little bit too much like religiosity slash puritanism there for me. Certainly, and it worries me. Whereas yeah. I'd prefer someone to be just a vegetarian, mm-hmm. who like maybe from time to time, if it didn't make sense, just ate some meat. If you right. know what I mean, and did it of make course. it like this real like ethical standpoint of their life that they're exactly. like, like this or that or like they they eat these things and you don't eat these things or whatever you know like it's like come on man we're, we're making this a little bit like religious a little bit exactly ethical, like too ethical about the food it's, it's nutrition right. we're right. talking about feeding or fueling a body right it's nutrition it's right. not religion right exactly but veganism becomes religion to me when not to mention like there is and I don't see the cutoffs though I don't see that we're like weird like you you, what you obviously mammals are out of the equation we have to treat them very well right Right. and then we have to treat like you know birds and reptiles etc well right Mm. but then you get like so where do you cut off your line of treating good and bad like your flora and fauna well I don't want to put words in in Tom's mouth but I've heard him talk about he would be alright with eating insects so, like, if there was some kind of insect protein, he might use that. So, which, I to mean, be honest, I'd be, I'm pretty into that as well. Like, I'd love to, I'd love to get some like protein flour, and you know, like, yeah. so essentially, like, 
ground up insect protein flour mm. like to, to bake with and stuff just like as long that. as no one tells you what the fuck you're eating just as long as it's <laughs> grounded and pounded like a motherfucker <laughs> it's just it doesn't there. have legs and it's like it's like super protein flour I would love that shit right I'm all for that it seems like a good, good gig right but I'm not doing that in any kind of ethical way yeah. I'm just doing that in like a hey man like I reckon that would be good for my body Oh, yeah. I think that's what nutrition should be. I think that's what eating food should be. Right. As a nutritional option, a nutritional right. thought process, not a religious or like not an ethical thing. Right. You know, it's like, you know, it's like when you get ethics into things like gender. Mm. I know we're going off to like getting a little, getting going into another topic there, but right. you know, when you start to get ethical about just like identifying with a gender or identifying with a race or whatever right or you get ethical about your nutrition like identifying with how you eat or whatever right that's where I think things start to go yeah sure go wrong but as we've heard many times before like it becomes like a almost identity politics so which is like a hot button word that I'm sure everyone that's listened to this podcast has heard before but essentially that's what it is like you being a vegan and you playing the vegan card is like you're 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 using that as your identity politics to say well i like my virtues are higher than your virtues therefore i am better than you are yeah. which is it's just a crock of shit really you know like each person is independent from one another and they hold certain values that aren't going to be the same as yours because i implore any vegan have a conversation with another vegan okay maybe you have veganism in common but I'm sure you don't you don't meet on the same level for any number of factors you know so like identity politics is is essentially just a, it's a null issue well at the end of the day as well like the, the beauty of that kind of thing is that like uh, say somebody I know I'm putting kind of words into people's mouths here a little bit but just as a thought experiment say people from the left or say I think it's probably fairly fairly acceptable to say that majority of say vegans would be from the left politically if mm. you know what I mean mm-hmm. and their and their idea their setup is that the idea is that they embrace like say diversity etc mm-hmm. but really if you're dealing with like uh, quite a lot of vegans if you aren't actually inside of the group of being a vegan or being sort of like vegan friendly by making an effort to be say a vegetarian or like really be like minimal with your meat consumption etc mm-hmm. so essentially conforming to them mm-hmm. are they really actually looking for diversity like there's a lot of people out there a lot of vegans out there that like actually couldn't live with you or couldn't really deal or interact with you because you're not in their particular they're essentially thing. trying to belong to a group they want to be a part of a group so, so which is, it's a it's a, a higher primate function really so I feel like people want to be incorporated into a group sort of so if that makes sense I don't know just for me like I just think that like the left side of politics doesn't really actually do the diversity thing very well no they don't like, even though they they try to play that card that they do yeah so. I think it it doesn't really work very well or like in practice it doesn't work very well no certainly not so well John we've talked quite a bit about things that we weren't expecting to talk about so anything else you want to hit on today did you did you actually mention anything about Jeff Sessions yeah, we talked a little bit about his uh, like his political leanings and his early career, and then kind of about his Russian connection and his potential, I guess, badness. <laughs> yeah, bad. So if that if that makes any sense. So, but I I think overall with with Jeff Sessions, like I just don't think we have all all the answers. I don't know that we will. So, so uh, are you happy with that? Oh, like you know, like, I don't mean that in a oh, no, about flip sessions. Like, did we discuss it enough? Did you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Did you feel like you got to any kind of consensus or anything? You got what you wanted to say about it, Al? I don't. I don't think I actually gave my opinion on kind of what I thought about the matter. Aside from try my best to give you give you that give you that space. Jim. Yeah, try my best. I know you're you're like popping the ball up to me and I'm working on it. And, uh, 
Yeah, I think I'm trying every day. I'm trying to be a better non-vegan. I think the question we have to ask ourselves is, uh, like, why would why would Jeff Sessions hide his talks with uh, with the diplomat, the Russian diplomat? Like, I, I think him deliberately saying that he doesn't want to talk about it or it, that it didn't exist and then for us to find out that it does exist and that he did meet with him not just once but two or three times like it, def- it definitely kind, kind of casts a shadow over whatever he might come out and say about whatever he talked about do I don't feel like we'll be getting the entire truth do you feel like like he, he kind of thought to himself for like the Tipovsky I really like Tip like he's a good guy but like Topovsky like you know he might kind of give me away he might give me the tip like you know I'm not going to really discuss anything here like it's just kind of like no I'm just I'm just, just going to keep this to myself yeah like you know I don't really trust Topovsky I don't really trust yeah Topovsky um, <laughs> I think ski no ski stay ski quiet ski it's like, just get a bit Russian on it I, yeah I, I think you're absolutely right so I think well, at least uh, we'll probably we'll probably see how this is going to play out in the next week. So, because you're seeing people on the left obviously lose their shit, and people on the right are kind of saying well, it does look a little bit shady. And it hasn't been many, but there's been a few people come out slowly saying, which um, if you look at the record of uh, McCain, you know, you know who McCain is Senator yeah. McCain, like. He is generally potato chips and shit, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, he's done yeah. the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that guy, right? Yeah. That's him. Yeah. No, uh, Arizona Senator um, John McCain. Oh yeah, Johnny Boy. Yeah. Johnny. That's right. But uh, if you if you look at his voting record, he's he's technically a re- Republican, but he's really like a centrist. Yeah. Like pretty, he's a pretty moderate yeah. guy, and he came out in this week and pretty much said it looks kind of shady, like. Senator Sessions, I'm sorry, Attorney General Sessions, he either needs to come out and divulge what was discussed, or he needs to essentially step aside and allow someone else to be, yeah, not not to take the, yeah, not not essentially be the Attorney General, but to investigate the involvement of the Russians in yeah. the current situation. So it's, it's definitely it'll be interesting in the next couple of weeks how that plays out. So, but. I think, yeah, the other elephant in the room, we didn't touch on it all, uh, or what we did beforehand, but we didn't really, I think we kind of almost, I guess maybe sort of had an idea not to talk about this, mm. and we won't go on too much more, I think we're pretty much done, mm. but like, is the whole idea of segueing or the analogy of, like, say, Hillary Clinton and her emails. Certainly. So, just remember when you're like, when you're slinging mud at the person that you hate, or the side that you hate, right. like, were you also enraged and singing mud and singing hate and mm-hmm. your side when essentially she kind of did the same thing or certainly in terms of like using personal s- email that's easily hackable right. to do these things if, you know etc if you're if you're a politically democratic person and you don't see things you don't see things with gray but you only see things either black or white don't listen to a fucking word we're talking about yeah. and just keep on throwing your shit but if you if you align with being in the gray and you're not really sure where you fall like you need to seriously take a look at what we could have had elected isn't isn't that and would it have been as fair to her as well i don't think so hopefully so. that's where america is going though chad as well mm-hmm. it's uh, 50 50 states of gray ah there you go man even the wink you gave Got me the it. fucking oh, wink jim yeah. So yeah, that was nasty. That was nasty. Yeah, yeah, Fifty states. Well, we gotta end on that. That's where we. That's well. That's where we need to get to. Well, that's yeah. where you need to get to. Yeah, the fifty states of gray. So you heard it here, guys. That's that's really what it needs to be, though. You're right. That's where it needs to be. No fucking. So if we had fifty states of gray, we wouldn't we wouldn't have elected Trump or Hillary Clinton. We would be in a far different situation. So, yeah, goodness, who would you? Who would you have well, I don't think we we saw them in this, in this election. Yeah. So, yeah, we haven't found them yet. Haven't yeah. seen them yet. Haven't yeah. seen them yet. So, well, anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this podcast. Uh, real quickly, just touching on the state of uh, my life right now. Had a baby a couple of weeks ago. Mommy and baby are doing just fine. 
few sleepless nights. So just trying to keep it together. So uh, if you've seen the state of podcast suffer a bit, it'll pick up as I gain more sleep in the coming weeks. So I think last last week was my bad mostly. <laughs> Honestly, not sleep these days. Fairly late and rugged time uh, of it, and uh, but the show must go on. So yes, the show it. must go on. We're trying to provide content no matter what for you folks. Yeah, pretty much. No matter what. I think that was pretty much what it was. <laughs> <laughs> nobody, nobody needs to know. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So, anyways, uh, yeah. Thank you for all the messages you guys have sent for the baby. Like. The, the Facebook outpours and, and like uh, the love that I've received has been just really overwhelming. I haven't quite been able to express how I feel about it, but really want to say thank you to you guys that have said anything to me online. And also, uh, thank you to my wife. She had a baby, man. She did it without any drugs. Got it done? Yeah, she she just she went all natural, which I couldn't imagine what that would feel like. And you watch a bit of a gangster sometimes. Yeah, she, yeah, she's she's tougher than me. I'm pretty sure I probably would have cried. So uh, she she cried too, but she she got it done. Her labor was incredibly short too. It was only four hours. So most people, yeah. it's, it's like an all day affair. Twenty twenty five. So, but anyways, uh, thank you once once more for uh, all the love and support you guys have sent to me online. Um, before we close out, just want to thank Mark at Beer Geek. It's an amazing place to drink. And we thank him for all of our daily refreshment needs. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Um, also, um, please hit us up on the parrotcast.com, our YouTube channel, which I do apologize, folks. We have, I do have the our yeah. last episode. I just have not put it up. I've, I've dropped the ball. We, we don't know what to do with the YouTube thing. It's kind of, it would be good if someone could give us some feedback about that or like tell us what we should do yeah. but we're thinking maybe we'll try and cut up our podcasts yeah to kind of like sections so like maybe a talk like today which is like 50 minutes whatever mm. maybe we can make it like three shorter clips on youtube yep, yep. that might be a project for, for the future where you kind of get us like a if that's a good thing maybe. if you get like a little you get a little nugget of whatever conversation we have throughout yeah. the month and then you can kind of say oh i don't really need to listen to all these podcasts yeah because i heard like the basically the we'll call it the supercast yeah something like so, that the parent cast supercast so but uh, anyways uh thank you guys so much for listening um and i guess we'll talk to you guys later okay yeah so, you okay. stay frosty i'm Ooh. pretty sure that's what you say right that is and you just stole it and i liked it see you later bitches Wisconsin is where I gotta be. Yeah. Then I'll take a plane. To- well, actually, I'm afraid to fly, so I think I'll take the train. Let's go, go, go. Going to Trenton, New Jersey, Frankfurt, Kentucky. Maybe take a trip to Jackson, Mississippi. Let's see what they can show me. In Jefferson City, Missouri. Santa Fe, New Mexico. Denver, Colorado. Boise, Idaho. I love it every time that I go. In 1492, he sailed the ocean blue. But next week, I'll see Columbus in Ohio. Grab a little sunshine in Tallahassee, Florida. Take a bite of a peach in Atlanta, Georgia. I've never been to Carson City in Nevada or Lincoln, Nebraska. You can catch me in Phoenix, Arizona or Sacramento, California. 